Hello everyone. This is a short video about interview analysis. It may be you're being asked to watch this because you're part of the research design subject at UTS. Otherwise, I still hope it's useful for you. I should say I'm not going to cover a lot of technical things in detail and this is by no means an exhaustive or complete summary of the approaches to interview analysis. But for those of you who are trying interviews out maybe for the first time, I hope some of these suggestions are useful in helping you think about the way the researchers approach interview analysis. I think the first thing to remember when uh, you're approaching an interview data is not to take the data for granted. This will probably apply in any kind of research, but particularly, I think, in interviews. Your first read, if you've transcribed your interview, should be a quality check, or if you haven't transcribed it, at least when you listen back to it. What do I mean by a quality check? I mean that you don't take assume that all your data in that interview is necessarily great data, or it's necessarily what you think it might be. You ask yourself, did you give the time, the interviewee time to think? Was there some silence built into that interview that enabled the person to reflect on the, uh, their answers before they gave them? Or did you push um, and not give some real chance for reflection for the participant? Did you probe? Did you ask, could you give me an example? Could you tell me more about that? Did you reflect back what you thought the participant was saying and say, so what I think you just said was this, is that right? Uh, did you ask some leading questions by mistake? Are there some answers where you think maybe I should discount that actually because of the, the conditions under which that answer was produced? Are there any indicators that some responses that that participant said may not be as solid as others in terms of evidence or data for what you're interested in looking at? Uh, so I think the first important thing is not to take our data for granted, but to step back and think, well, OK, how do I know this is good data? And are there some reasons why I might be cautious before interpreting too much of what somebody said at face value? Then overall, I think you can think about three big questions. And I have written about this with Prachi Srivastava in a paper about a practical iterative framework for data analysis. And these three questions, I think, govern much qualitative analysis. And they're very, very useful to think about in, in analysing interview data. The first one is, what are the data telling me? The second one is, what do I want to know? And the third one is, what is the relationship between these two things? What the data are telling me and what I want to know. I'll do a video at another point with going into this framework in much more detail. And particularly things like why I've said what are the data telling me rather than just what are the data saying. But in an interview, this is interesting because you will have had some purpose when you talk to somebody, when you ask them certain questions. So there was something that you wanted to know. But often we do interviews because we're also interested in what people have to say. And so that balance between maybe what the person was really important to this person wasn't quite what you were asking about. And your analysis might be picking that up and saying, well, although I wanted to know this, it seems that what this person wanted to tell me was something else. So... And you might be thinking about, well, how much in my research do I want to move towards what the person thought was interesting and how much do I want to stay with what I wanted to know? And then, of course, you can start to think about, well, does this interview transcript or this recording that I'm listening to actually take me any further in terms of what I want to know? Does it mean I should change what I think it is I want to know, come up with some new questions? Um, or is it really actually very centrally focused on the data telling me what I wanted to know? If the answer to that question, the last question is no, don't worry, that's very common. Often the data will tell you something that's a bit different from what you wanted to know. I think often that's an indicator that you've been doing a good interview where people have felt comfortable and you've shown some openness and flexibility in working with them. Then there are some kind of technical options about what you might do with interview data. Most commonly, people will transcribe the interview, i.e. type it out word for word, and do what we call coding. We code the data. This basically means putting different bits of data into different categories so you can identify different ideas that were covered. So you might have part of somebody's response that talks about a particular issue and then they move on to another issue and that might, issue might come back. And so you might highlight or with highlight a pen or there are softwares to do this or you can do it in Microsoft Word or Excel um, and break your data down into chunks and then group those different chunks into particular codes or themes or categories. This is very useful when you have several interviews because you can make comparisons and contrasts between them. One of the risks in doing this, or one of the difficulties, is that it takes little bits of data out of their context. And there are lots of debates about what, you what level you should be coding at. Can you code sentences, whole paragraphs? 
Should you also include the question that you asked so that when you look back at the code, you get the things that people were asked before, the, the things that prompted a particular response. In relation to coding, you might come across the idea of constant comparison. Uh, this is a really helpful tool for thinking about analysis. And what this means is, particularly when you end up with more than one interview, quite a lot of data, what you might do is you could go through a subset of um, interviews or part of an interview and you might come up with four or five different codes or themes. And then the idea is that you say, well, OK, can I use these to account for the main emerging ideas and what people were saying in the remainder of this interview or in other bits of my data? And then you might find that the four of them are working quite well, but you also need two more. And then you'd have to go back to the beginning and start with those initial bits of data that you looked at and see whether those two new codes also apply there. So there's a lot of toing and froing, the word iterative, and you're going back and forth between things so that you develop some ideas or themes or codes from part of the data and then you see if they apply more widely and then as they change then you go again and apply it to all the data. So through this process you look at the data lots and lots of times. Other approaches that you might use with looking at an interview could be to kind of rewrite it as a narrative or story. So this would be very much centred on the person who, who um, you interviewed or the people that you interviewed. But sometimes the interview, the order in which you ask the questions, isn't the best order for conveying what was a kind of a story that was being told. So this might be under narrative approaches. You might have had a more open-ended interview approach, but you can kind of rework what people have said into a kind of more linear story that could be drawing heavily on their own words it could be putting it more into your own words or a mixture of those there is another approach and we'll explore this one in class if you're actually coming to class with me in research design where you might pre-decide a theme or a sub-focus so in the example we're going to look at we're going to choose different people that this person in the interview said she had relationships with that helped her during her phd and you might find all the relevant information about that person within an interview or about that theme or sub-focus. If you've been interviewing somebody, I don't know, about aspects of their work, you might decide, right, I'm going to find all the things to do with managers. So you could get all the managers, which could be a coding exercise. You could have coded and, and found managers as a code. But you can get all the stuff to do with managers and then you look and say, OK, what have I learned about this person and their relationship with managers? or their experience of management in a workplace, for example. And then you could summarise what you've learned from that in your own words. And then what you do is you have lots of summaries of different aspects or ideas that collapse together and synthesise a lot of raw data so you start to add your own value to the analysis. There are heaps of other approaches to interview analysis. There's discourse analysis, you might do conversation analysis, there are approaches that are called grounded theory, which involve going back to the field early on. They might have very them uh, thematic analysis, you might have a very theoretically informed analysis, where you kind of put some theoretical goggles on and you use theories to see different things in interviews. You might use a theory to say what somebody's talking about here is indicative of something else. The three approaches I've just described here, or different approaches are just very very basic starting points for thinking about what can I do when I've got this interview data in front of me or when I'm listening to it. Um, it's always and I'm, uh, I admit to being quite a lazy academic if there's a shortcut to something I'd normally have found it and tried it. I've never yet found a shortcut in analysis and whichever approach you take good analysis always takes a long time and the first analysis is never the best. So it's always going to be a kind of a time-consuming and a step-by-step -step and an iterative process and one of gradual evolution. That's just part of the course in analysis. I hope this has been useful as a little introduction and get you thinking about some interview analysis questions. If in class you have any questions, feel free to, please, I'm encouraging you to, to bring them to class. If you're watching this just as a, a part of the YouTube community, please feel free to comment or ask questions below on the webpage. Thanks very much. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.